So a very warm welcome to this afternoon's event, which is entitled A Game of Consequences, which is a contribution to London Climate Action Week. And so today we're very fortunate to have Sister Shivani share on this topic. But just before I introduce her and welcome her, I'd like to share a few quotes that I came across around climate change. And the first one is really something to reflect on. And the quote goes like this. And it says, the real crisis is not global warming, environmental destruction, animal agriculture. The real crisis is us. These problems are symptoms of us. And so the question is, how did we end up here? How did we get to this point where we are destroying the planet that we live on? I think it's a really good question to reflect on. I think each and every one of us have a responsibility for our environment. And there was another quote that I really felt answered this question. And this quote was as follows. We abuse land because we see it as a commodity belonging to us. When we see land as a community to which we belong, maybe we'll be able to use it with love and respect. And so it's a question for all of us. Do I use my environment, this land as a commodity, or do I see it as part of my community? And so it gives me great pleasure to really introduce Sister Shivani. And um, just before we welcome her, I'd like to share a short introduction. And Sister Shivani is a practitioner of Raj Yoga Meditation of the Brahma Kumaris for over 22 years. Her practical application of spiritual principles on the TV program, Awakening with the Brahma Kumaris for over 13 years has empowered people to overcome issues of emotional distress, depression, and relationship conflicts. In March, 2019, she was awarded the prestigious Nari Shakti Puriskar, hope I pronounced that correctly, the highest civilian honor for women in India for her role in transforming human behavior. She has been appointed as Goodwill Ambassador by the World Psychiatrist Association. And she is an electronics engineer from Pune University. And so Sister Shivani, a very, very warm welcome to you. And we're very happy that you could be with us on this very important week in London for Climate Action Week. And so again, lovely topic, a game of consequences. And so over to you. Om Shanti, sister, and thank you so much. Let's take a minute of silence and focus your attention to the center of your forehead, the energy center. The center where I, the being, create every thought every feeling, intention. Just feel the energy. This body is my costume. I, the being, is the creator. and the vibrations I create. They radiate. And just feel this right now, that every vibration, every thought, every feeling I create here, it's energy, it vibrates, it radiates. Where does it radiate to? What answer does the mind give? With every thought I create, the energy. Where does it radiate to? Just take a second to check and you would know the answer. The energy I create. Where all does it radiate to?
every thought I create, it radiates. Every memory I hold on to, it radiates. Every feeling I experience, it radiates. I am a creator and radiator of energy. Om Shanti. I, the being, we are human beings, human, the body, and being, the energy. The energy which uses this body and chooses to see what it wants to see, say what it wants to say, and do what it wants to do, is I, the being, the energy. Every thought I create, every word I speak, every behavior, it's energy that I create. And this is called karma. Karma means the energy I create. It's my creation. Every thought, every word, every behavior is energy I create. And what I create, it radiates from me to the world. Where all does this energy radiate to? The first thing it influences is how I feel. Second, every thought I create radiates to every cell of my body. So when we are stressed, the body feels different. When we are hurt, we are in pain, it's a different energy in the body. When we are angry, it's a different energy. When we are at calm, and peace, internally, silent mind, the energy is different in the body. And we've all experienced these differences. So it's the result of the vibration that's radiating from me to every cell of the body. So my vibrations influence my physical health. Third, every thought I create, it radiates to people. So whoever I think of, before I say it to them, maybe some of the things I don't say to people, I'm only thinking about them. Or before I pick up my phone and message them, what I've created inside is already radiated to them. So every thought, energy that radiates, it becomes the foundation of our relationships. And fourth, every energy vibration that I create, it radiates into the environment. It's not here. It doesn't remain staying here inside. It radiates into the environment. It influences the air, the water, the plants, the trees, the animals, the birds, everyone. Like our vibrations influence people, our vibrations influence nature. They influence the planet. And therefore, environment is largely influenced by our emotions. And the energy of the planet, which we call the collective consciousness of the planet, like the energy of your home, just feel the energy of your house. What is the energy of the house? Why does every house vibrate at a different energy? It's because the energy of a house is actually the vibrations of all the people living in that house. So if you're the only one, and that's you are the one who creates the energy of the home. If it's two, three, four people, then we are the ones who create the energy of the home. And so the homes may be identical looking, may be furnished identical, but when you enter different homes, they feel different. It's because of the vibration of the home. So how did that get created? Because the energy in the minds doesn't stay inside. It radiates into the house and it creates the energy of the house. Similarly, the planet, our home, it's our home. So millions and millions and millions of us, all the thoughts and feelings we create throughout the day, it's radiating and it's creating the collective consciousness of the planet. 
or we can call it the vibrational frequency of the planet. And this vibrational frequency is influencing nature. It's influencing nature. So as is the being, so is the world. As is the being, so is the quality of the world. Now, if we just introspect, what is the quality of the vibrations I create? Because as I create, so will be the consequence. Simple. If I create a um, nice, appreciative thought about someone, I feel happy. I feel good. So the thought, the consequence is the feeling. If I am calm and stable, I radiate pure energy to the body. The body gets healing energy. If I'm stressed, I radiate energy of a lower vibration to the body. The body feel uncomfortable. My pulse rate might change. My heartbeat might change. My hands might sweat. My mouth may go dry. I feel nausea, acidity. Why did all this happen? The vibrations I create, consequence. It's the consequence on the body. Over a period of many years, it can manifest into a disease. If I'm not able to forgive people, if I'm not able to let go of something that I'm holding on to for years, if I'm holding on to resentment, hatred, or hurt, or I feel rejected, and I've been holding on to it for a very long time, it's radiating to my body. And when it keeps radiating the same vibration on a daily basis, it can, it can manifest into an energy blockage in the body. And with that, if I don't have the right lifestyle, then it can manifest into a disease. So that's a consequence. It's a consequence of the energy I created and the lifestyle that I was leading. So every thought, feeling, vibration I create, it has a consequence. Similarly, if I'm critical, judgmental in my thinking about people, I radiate that energy to them. And without me saying anything to them, I wouldn't have said a word to them, but my relationship with them will start getting affected. So check your relationships. If there's any relationship you want to heal, if there's any relationship which you want to enhance the quality, don't wait for them to change. We don't need two people to change, to, to heal a relationship. We need only one person to change what they're thinking about the other person because it's that vibration which is creating the quality of that relationship. So the relationship is a consequence of my thoughts and feelings about people. So I create the vibration. The quality of the relationship is the consequence of that creation. And the fourth, every thought I create radiates into the environment. So what's the energy of the planet? What's the quality of the air? How, what is the healing energy of the water that we are consuming on a daily basis? What's the healing energy of the plants, the herbs? What's the vibration? Why is it that in spite of having the best of food, in spite of having the best of food and taking care of organic products and everything, still, why? Why is my body not perfectly healthy the way I want it to be? Because the vibrations that we are radiating to all of these things. So everything has a consequence. Now, when we look at these four things, my feelings, my mental health, my physical health, my relationships, and my world, my environment, we find there is a lot which needs to change. We want to finish mental health issues. We want to be happy, happy always. We want to heal and we want to create a perfect, healthy body. We want strong, harmonious relationships. And we want a beautiful planet, a beautiful planet. But how is this change going to get created? Because all these four things are a consequence. We cannot change a consequence unless we change the source, the creation which was responsible for that consequence. So the world or my body or my relationships cannot be changed outside without me creating a change inside. Because this vibration is the seed, it's the creation, and what I see is the consequence. So what I'm creating is not visible. What is visible is the consequence. And then when we see the consequence, like suppose if I manifest a disease in the body, I'm not 
introspecting to see what's the cause of this disease. I just go with my disease to the doctor. I explain my symptoms, take the medication and try and finish off the symptoms. Or I go through a procedure or through a surgery and I say, okay, now I'm fine. But then what does the doctor say to us? Say, take care. There are chances this might manifest again. Why does a disease recur? Why does it manifest again? Because the source, the creation is not changed. We only went and changed the consequence. We only went and changed the result of what we were creating. We have to go to the source. Similarly, when we come to the environment, we are all working very hard. We are concerned. We're taking care. But we're taking care only outside. Only outside. Again, we're taking care only on the consequence. We will have to take care of the source, the core, the seed, which is responsible for this tree. We want to change the quality of the tree. But you can't change the quality of the tree without nurturing the seed. So what's the vibration that I create on a daily basis? Because now I know where all it's going to impact and what's the consequence it's going to create. So for the last few decades, as a society, we've been living a life which says stress is normal, anxiety is normal, fear is normal, uh, being judgmental, critical, it's natural. I mean, people are like that. So that's how I'm going to think about them. Life is a competition. Comparison is normal. Hurt, people hurt me. So we've been creating a lot of low vibrational energies and we've called it normal. And because we call it normal and people endorse it and say, yes, it's normal, then all of us together have been creating these low vibrational frequencies. These are low vibrational energies, stress, anxiety, fear, anger, irritation, impatience, holding on, hurt, resentment, jealousy, low vibrational energies. What are high vibrational energies? Purity, peace, calm and stability, compassion empathy, respect, forgiveness, self-respect, appreciation, gratitude, cooperation, kindness, sharing. The list is long. Both the lists are very long. And we know both the lists. But at which vibration am I living my life? Am I mostly at a lower vibrational frequency or I'm here most of the time? If I'm here, the consequences of my life will be different. But if I'm here, then the consequences are what we are getting to see. So if we want to create any change in this tree of the world, then we only have to create a simple change, shift from this low vibrational lifestyle to a high vibrational lifestyle. That shift has to happen within. Shift, which means let's change our karma. The consequence will change. <coughs> Let's change the energy that I create. The world will change because when we change, our world changes. What is our world? Our world means my body is my world. My home is my world. My workplace is my world. My relationships and my planet is my world. When I change, my world changes. And this is a spiritual equation which we now need to hold on to for all the changes that we want to create on the planet. So let's start shifting, you know, because when we are thinking and feeling, we think it's only about me. So what if I'm hurt? So what, I'm hurt, but why am I hurt? Because they hurt me, that's what I believe. And I hold on and I'm a little upset, I may cry, but I thought it's only about me. I'm not affecting anybody else. And so I allow myself to remain in pain for 10 minutes, 10 hours, 10 days, sometimes even longer than that. And I, like a victim, it's they who betrayed me. It's they who cheated me. So hurt is normal. And I create that hurt. I hold on to that hurt. I do not heal the emotional wounds. I do not release the pain. And I allow myself to live in that pain. And I think it's fine. Suffer. I'm suffering, but it's fine because I have been betrayed. So this suffering is normal. If I just pause for a second and tell myself, my hurt is not just my hurt. It's not just something which is going to affect me inside. It's going to affect my body. 
it's going to radiate to people i am radiating pain to people around me they won't know that i'm radiating it i can't see that i'm radiating it but i am radiating it and that's why people they say i can feel the vibes of this person how come people are able to feel our vibes because we are carrying an aura we are carrying an energy field and people can feel the energy of that aura our energy field and so what does my energy field hold what i am here inside so if i am carrying pain here inside i am radiating pain to people around me i am radiating pain into the vibration of my home and i am radiating pain into the vibration of the planet i am radiating pain to the air to the water to the plants i need to say that to myself i need to say that to myself i am responsible for all that's happening in the world and if only if only i just pause for a few minutes meditate counsel myself i've counseled many others can i not counsel myself can i not talk to myself can i not write it out what's troubling me can i not connect to the divine absorb that unconditional love and purity and heal my wound consequence i will be happy my body will be healthy i will radiate pure vibrations and i will start healing the vibrational frequency of the planet so if we if we as a majority are living at a lower vibrational energy then the planet is at a lower vibrational energy but if we are at a higher vibrational energy then the planet is at a higher vibrational energy what have we done in the last one one and a half years we were anyways not at the best of energy and in these last uh, 12 14 months what have we done we said fear and anxiety is normal covid was a physical health issue we were learning to take care but we said fear and anxiety is normal and when millions and millions of mind for over one year create fear and anxiety where do we think the vibration of the planet would have shifted it's obviously gone a little lower than what it was and now we want a beautiful world so let's take responsibility that the world is only a consequence of what i create and when i shift from stress to calm and stability i'm shifting the vibration of the planet tomorrow when i choose to not react with anger but to respond with empathy to discipline with respect i'm shifting the vibration of the planet when i choose self respect i know myself i know my strengths and weaknesses i'll work on myself but i do not compare myself with others i am shifting the vibration of the planet when i stop complaining as if this is not right this is not right and i shift to gratitude i'm changing the vibration of the planet so just one little shift within is going to create a shift in the energy of the planet because my mind is a part of the collective consciousness of the planet what is the collective consciousness of the planet same like the collective consciousness of the house house consciousness minds of all the people living in that house office workplace collective consciousness minds working in that place go to a shopping mall vibration is different because the minds the same minds are creating a different energy into the in the shopping mall now go to a place of worship go to a church a temple a meditation center a retreat center the same minds who were in the shopping mall create different thoughts and different feelings in that place of worship and so the vibrations of the place of worship are divine they are calm they are peaceful we enter into the place and we start feeling good but who created the vibrations of that place of worship we how did we create it by how we were thinking feeling and speaking while we were there so we are creating the vibrations of places similarly we are creating the vibration of this big place where we live and that is our planet so let's not wait let's not just wait and say okay scientists are saying this so what can we do about it and then say what can i alone do about this everyone else is doing what they're doing what change can i create it's the power of one the power of one 
never underestimate the power of one. It's every mind which is going to contribute towards changing this energy. And my mind is one of those minds. So today, think. Let's not just point fingers and say, oh, but they are doing this. Again. What am I doing for the world? Because I thought maybe I, what can I do? It's the scientists who are doing, it's the government who is doing. What am I doing to heal the world? What am I doing to resolve the issue, the crisis which is there before our world? And it's so simple. Just shift within. Shift the karma. Shift the energy that I am creating and change the consequences. Change to happiness, health, harmony, and we can create heaven on earth. What is heaven on earth? A higher vibrational place, a higher vibrational energy. So let's start experimenting. Let's stop blaming the world for how we are feeling. You know why we allow ourselves to live at lower vibrational energies and keep creating those lower vibrational emotions because we think the world is responsible for how I think and feel. We've lived our lives saying, I'm angry because of them. I'm hurt because of them. I'm upset because of them. COVID, fear and anxiety is normal. So we're living a life of blame. What does meditation give us is the power to shift from a life of blame to a life of personal responsibility, to shift from a life of emotional dependence to a life of emotional independence that whatever may be the situation, whatever may be the person's behavior, I am the creator of my thought and feeling, and I am going to choose a higher vibrational thought and feeling in every situation, in every situation, because what I choose and what I create is my karma. That's my creation. That's the energy I send out into the world, and I am responsible. So for someone's mistake, I am not going to create anger or hurt and resentment and deplete my energy and deplete the energy of the planet. So check today and then keep checking every day on a practical day-to-day -day basis. And let's integrate some basic lifestyle principles by which we can start changing the vibration within and change the vibration outside. Simple lifestyle habits like daily meditation, because meditation heals emotional wounds. Meditation emerges high vibrational thoughts and feelings. Meditation connects us to the divine power, the source of unconditional love, unconditional acceptance. It's healing energy. Let's start practicing meditation on a daily basis. Let's keep a few minutes daily for studying spiritual principles. It's content. We consume so much content during the day. And everything we thought, everything we watch, read, listen is who we become. Everything, I need to keep a note of this. Everything I watch, read, listen is who I become. And what I become is what the world becomes. So content is equal to personality. And personality then creates the karma. And as is the karma, so is the consequence. So content is playing a lot of role in the consequence that is manifesting. So everything I watch, read, listen, it influences the being and the being creates the energy and the energy manifests the consequence. So let me take care. Let me restrict content consumption. Be very careful of the quality of the content you're using on a daily basis. If I consume content of ego, lust, greed, jealousy, violence, aggression, humiliation, criticism, ridicule, if I consume content of that, then I am consuming a low vibrational content. Then I will create low vibrational thoughts and then I will manifest a low vibrational word. So I need to shift to consuming high vibrational content, spiritual study, consuming content which has divinity, purity, acceptance, love, power, consuming content of that, that's spiritual study. So daily, at least, um, at least 20 minutes to begin with, at least 20 minutes consuming high vibrational nutritious, it's nutritious content and the other one is toxic content. So high vibrational emotional diet, then start creating 
high vibrational thoughts and feelings because a good diet and meditation. We will naturally create high vibrational thoughts and feelings in every situation that comes to us. We will stop reacting and we will take personal responsibility and create the right thoughts and feelings in every situation coming to us. We will shift from being a victim, blaming the world, to becoming a master of our life, a master of our life. And what will happen when that happens is as this inner power, as the inner power, this starts increasing, which means the soul power increases because I'm energizing myself on a daily basis. My spiritual health is getting better. As I energize myself on a daily basis, I am happy. I am contented. And when I am contented, desires start diminishing. And when desires start diminishing, it's very natural to start living a life of simplicity. Simplicity. Because then I buy, I use only what I need, only what is necessary. I don't buy or use for happiness. It's a lot of difference between the two things. Everything that I buy and use from the environment, from the resources, am I doing it for what I need or am I doing it to feel good? Do I eat for health or do I eat to feel happy? So I feel good after eating this and I'm not eating for health. I am trying to eat to be happy. I'm trying to eat so that I forget my pain. I'm trying to distract my mind by giving it good taste. So am I eating for health or am I eating for happiness? What I buy, what I wear, am I buying it to cover my body or am I buying it to feel happy or am I buying it so that I get appreciation from people around me? Am I buying it to show the world what all I can possess? What is my intention behind buying what I'm buying? Everything has an intention. It has an intention. If I was buying my clothes only to cover my body, neat, clean, presentable, only to cover my body, then how many dresses would my wardrobe have? But if I am buying to feel good, if I'm buying more because I'm bored of seeing the clothes in my wardrobe, which means to stimulate my mind, I need to buy new things. If I'm buying so that people will say I'm looking nice in that new dress, they've already seen all my old dresses. They are not going to appreciate me for that. They've already seen it many times. But when I wear something new, everybody notices me. I seek attention. I get appreciation. And that makes me feel good. It's a stimulant. It's addictive, the appreciation. So then I buy something new so that I get that appreciation. What is my intention behind buying what I'm buying? So when I buy because I want to feel happy, because I need something new, I'm bored of what I was using, whether it's clothes, whether it's an object, whether it's my phone, whether it's my car, everything that I use, if I get bored, if I get bored easily and I keep changing and I need more and more and new and new, then. I am consuming a lot from the planet. I am consuming much, much, much more than I actually need. But if I start nourishing the being, and most important, even after consuming so much, we're still not happy. We're still not happy because it's not going to come from those objects. Those objects were not meant for happiness. Clothes were meant to cover the body. Food was meant for health. Phones, cars, they were meant for communication, transport. They were not meant to give me happiness. They are not a stimulus which is going to give something to my mind. So in spite of consuming so much from the resources of the world, I still haven't achieved what I wanted to achieve, the contentment or the happiness. So I need to pause and check. It's not going to come from anything outside. The outer world does not create the inner world. The inner world radiates and manifests the outer world. So if I start nourishing this being with spiritual study principles and meditation and the right lifestyle, this inner being starts energizing, 
I'm happy, I'm contented, then I don't get bored, then I don't seek appreciation, I'm not addicted to attention, I don't need new things to feel good. I'm fine with my objects as long as they're working fine. I don't find the need to change them. Even if I've been using them for a decade, I won't find the need to go and buy something new because I am not buying them for happiness. I'm buying them for communication, for working, for transport, and they're working fine. So why should I go and buy something new? Simple city in life will become natural. We won't have to do anything. We don't have to do anything to shift towards a simplistic life. It will become natural because we will buy only what we need, only need outside. We will not buy or use anything to create a happy mind because we also understand that objects, food, it really cannot give us happiness. These are all stimulants. We think that will. It doesn't. And so we're not even achieving it after abusing our resources. So it's really time to pause and check and to see where is the source of healing these wounds? How do I shift from a lower vibrational energy to a higher vibrational energy? And then start experimenting with that. Start experiencing it. One, life will change. It will become simple. Contentment will be natural. One benefit. Second benefit. I am radiating pure vibrations. I'm radiating pure vibrations. And so that's also changing the vibration of the planet. That is energizing. You know, when we create pure thoughts, our body feels good. You know, just sit in meditation for a few minutes. Just go to a place of worship and just sit in silence. Even if you don't know how to meditate, even if you're not praying and you're just sitting there in silence, you will feel a change in your body. Well, I must share a little experience. I was once at a retreat center in Australia and we had a little gathering of about 50 people. And uh, there was a lady, she had come with her husband. The husband was not interested in the session, but he very sweetly accompanied his wife. And during that session of about an hour, he didn't even look, look at me eye to eye, not at all. He was just looking in another direction. So which is okay. And uh, at the end of the session, he didn't come up to take the gift or the blessing card. And then another sister said to me, can we go up to him and give the gift and the blessing card? And so we went up to him and he just said very sweetly, I'm really sorry, but I'm not interested in all this. We said, it's perfectly fine, but we're really happy to have you here. He said, yeah, but you know, the spirituality, meditation and all, I don't understand all these things. So I was really not interested. I've just come for her. He said, it's perfectly fine. We are happy here to have you. And then he said a very important thing. And he said, but I must tell you something. My fitness tracker that I've been wearing has been showing me very different results in this last one hour. Now, he was feeling calm, more rested even though he was not interested, even though he was not interested. Why? The vibrations of the place were impacting. But who created the vibrations of the place? Everyone who meditates there on a daily basis. This is how collective consciousness will change so much. So we need to start taking care that when I create pure thoughts, the energy of my body changes. Similarly, the energy of the water, the air, the plants, the animals, everything changes. The energy of the planet changes. So let's create a shift within. The consequence will be a big shift outside, a big shift outside. So we have the power. We have the power. It's our responsibility to create happiness, health, harmony in relationships, and heaven on earth. Thank you so much. Om Shanti. Thank you for sharing so beautifully. And I was writing copious notes as you were, as you were sharing. And I just wanted to really repeat, repeat this equation that you just left us with regarding high vibrational content leads to high vibrational thoughts and feelings, and that leads to happiness. And when there's happiness, there are no desires. And when there are no desires, their simplicity 
And so our needs are very few. So it's like you just condensed everything in, in that equation. So thank you for that. And for those of you on Zoom, you're welcome to type your questions in the chat. Meanwhile, I'm going to ask Shivani a few questions that came to my mind as I was listening, if that's okay. And one of the things I, I really liked was this whole idea of um, the consequence being visible, but the creation being invisible. And so, and so that means we can't really see it. And what we see is just what, what's on the external, but I don't often see what's going on internally. And so the question is how to make the creation visible. You spoke about meditation, and I don't know if all of our viewers are meditators, but perhaps just to break it down a little bit, what are the steps to begin to um, make that creation visible? I can see that things are not going smoothly in my life, but I am blaming. I don't see what's going on internally. So a few steps, what would you say to our viewers? The first step we need to understand is the connection between the creation and the consequence. You know, so the energy flow, what I create is the energy which flows from me to the world. Mm. What comes towards me is the energy which is coming from the world to me. So in terms of karma, what we are creating is karma and what's coming towards me, it's destiny. So whether we call it destiny or we call it consequence, that's the energy that's coming towards me. But I need to know the connection between the two. It's like a ball you throw out and the ball returns to you. It's a boomerang. You throw it out, it comes back to you. But what I am seeing is only what's coming back to me. So when that thing is coming back to me, it's like, why is this happening in my life? Why is this happening to the world? Why is my relationship crumbling? Why is my body not healthy? So we have a lot of whys about the consequence. We need to remember, this is only a consequence, which means it's an energy on the return. It's a return journey energy somewhere I have created something. So let's not question the return energy. Let's just focus on the energy I create, create a shift there, and the consequence will start changing. Now, how to start seeing what we are creating? First and foremost, to be aware that we are creating. Till we start meditating or we understand spirituality, many of us were not even aware that we are creating our thoughts and feelings. You know, we would just say, that thought just came to me or they are responsible for how I'm feeling. I'm just not aware that we are creating our thoughts and feelings. So one is to be aware that I'm creating it. Second, as we start practicing meditation, the speed of our thoughts will start slowing down. Right now, it is such a clutter, which means it's overthinking. It's so fast inside that we won't be aware also of how many thoughts we've created. But when we start meditating, which means we spend some time in silence on a daily basis to begin with, five minutes, 10 minutes, being with ourselves. To begin with, don't even meditate, just sit still in one place. You know, even that is not very simple immediately because we haven't done it since a very long time. We get distracted easily. So to begin with, we sit still in one place, not distracted by gadgets or anything else happening around us. Then we learn meditation. Because meditation is not something that just happens on its own. But we learn how to meditate. Meditation uses three powers. The power of affirmation, the power of visualization, and the power of manifestation. Which means we create a thought. So if I create one thought, I am a peaceful being. It's an affirmation. It's a high vibrational affirmation. During the day, I find myself saying very often, I'm stressed. This is a low vibrational affirmation. So when in the morning I consciously create a high vibrational affirmation, I am a peaceful being. Second, visualize it in the day, in action. I am a peaceful being. In crisis, in pressures at work, I am a peaceful being. Visualize it in the morning. And what we affirm and visualize, it gets recorded here. And it's an energy which I'm creating. Now, even during those few minutes of meditation, I'm radiating very pure energy to the body and I'm radiating that energy to the planet. So even while we are meditating, we're actually healing the planet because we're radiating pure energy there. And when we start doing this on a daily basis, within a couple of months, we will be able to see our thoughts. See our thoughts means we will be aware. Okay, like suppose you say something to me right now, and if I get critical about you in the mind, I'll be able to see it. I can see it that, yes, I have created a judgmental thought about her. So we will reach that stage within a few months. 
that we will start seeing our thoughts. How will we be able to start seeing it? Because we sat with it every morning to look at it. You know, it's, it's one area of our life which we've not been looking at. Once we start looking at it every morning, then we will be able to see it during the day. So we can see our thoughts. If I create jealousy for someone, I will be able to see my thought immediately. But to do that, I have to start seeing it every morning. Then seeing it during the day becomes natural. Thank you. And, and just picking up on that point before we, I can see lots of questions coming in, but just before we, uh, we go to those questions, um, I really understand that definitely we see the weaknesses that we have. We see the kinds of thoughts we have, but sometimes we can't always change it. We know it's happening. We're saying, I shouldn't be feeling this. I'm a peaceful yeah. soul and I'm saying it, but I'm not feeling that. And so right. what is the bridge then from seeing to then making it practical? I know I'm having these jealous thoughts, but I can't seem to yes. change it. So what, what are the so, steps? Right. So what's the bridge between a body which is aching, paining and low on stamina to a healthy body? You know, so I can see it. This is my aches and pains. I'm getting breathless while I'm climbing steps. I don't have the stamina that I want to have. Then how do I manifest health? I change my diet mm -hmm. and I start exercising. You know, just the desire to have health is not going to give me health. I have to do something about it. So I change my diet and I start exercising. So what's, how do I manifest good health here? Which means the right thoughts. First change the diet, which is the emotional diet. So that's where the content comes in. If I'm consuming a low vibrational content, however hard I try, even if I switch my thought for a few seconds, it will go back to that low vibrational thought because I have flooded my mind with low vibrational content. So if we look at the destiny of the world in the last couple of decades, since the time we got flooded with content. So when you and me were in school, we didn't have this kind of content that we have today. So we didn't have mobiles, I think. We didn't have internet. We didn't have computers. We didn't have televisions 24 by 7. So we were not doing much to take care of our mind because it was just taken care of on its own because we were not flooding ourselves with toxic content. So the first thing, if I want to change my thoughts, is a diet change. The diet change is very, very important. So restrict content consumption. Be very careful that we are not consuming content just before going to sleep which is the time where most people are surfing internet or are scrolling on their phones or are changing channels. It's because that's the time which they feel they finish their work, students feel they finish their studies. And this is my relaxation time. It's the most dangerous time to consume content because we're gonna to go to sleep after that, which means the subconscious mind is going to open. I'm going to go into the Delta stage of sleeping and everything that I consume last before sleeping goes deep into the subconscious. So the seed has gone in. So two times are very important for checking content. Last thing before we sleep and first thing when we wake up. First thing when we wake up. Most of us sleep with our phones. And the first thing that we wake up is like, we scroll our phones. So even if we scroll for five minutes, checking all social media handles, emails, messages, world news, five, 10 minutes, I flooded my mind with the world. That's not what we do first thing in the morning. The mind is like a blotting paper, clean, absorption power highest. That's the time to flood it with pure, divine, healthy content. That's why spiritual study early morning and then revise that in the night just before going to sleep. This simple lifestyle change, thoughts will change on its own, which means health will change because I changed my diet. Thank you. Such a clear answer. A few questions coming in now. And the first is, how do we protect ourselves from negative energy coming towards me? Perhaps you've perhaps answered that in some way, but maybe if you've got anything else to add, how do we protect ourselves from negative energy coming towards me? Okay. Uh, one is, what do we mean by negative energy coming towards me? It means maybe vibrations of other people or maybe what other people are thinking about me, right? So if someone is thinking about me in a critical manner or uh, jealous, someone's jealous of me, someone's insecure, someone's egoistic, so they are not deliberately thinking negative about me. It's just that they are emotionally in that state of mind. So those vibrations are traveling towards me, but, but their vibrations cannot reach me, which means they cannot enter into my energy field if I am at a higher vibrational energy. We need to remember the law of energy. 
energy doesn't flow from lower to upper energy always flows from high to low energy cannot flow like this have you ever seen water flowing like this unless you use a machine for it naturally water can never flow like this it will always flow like this so energy always flows from a higher level to a lower level so if someone is at a lower vibrational energy if i am somewhere very similar very close to their energy then their energy will influence me but if i live at a higher vibrational energy their energy can do nothing to me but my energy will start healing me and that's why the meditation why should i meditate some people ask why should i connect to god why do i need god in my life well god is only that only one energy which can pull my energy there because if i connect to the supreme power my energy is getting pulled closer towards the highest energy so when i'm here and even if someone around me is at a lower energy it will not radiate to me i'm protected like during covid times we keep a distance right so if we keep that accurate distance the virus cannot enter into us similarly vibrational distancing vibrational distancing so someone around you maybe your spouse maybe your child maybe your friend maybe your colleague is going through a very tough time very bitter very resentful lot of in pain but they are at a lower vibrational energy if you meditate daily if you lead a healthy lifestyle and you are at a higher energy their pain cannot enter into your energy field but your purity can start healing you so don't worry about people's vibrations just take care of your own vibration keep that higher and no lower energy can enter into your energy field wonderful thank you so much another question here how do i develop self acceptance self acceptance mm. uh only finish your dependency on the acceptance from other people that's all it's actually very easy to love ourselves to accept ourselves but somewhere since we were kids we were kind of programmed to believing that when other people accept us when other people appreciate us then we are good people you know people would say oh you're a good boy you're a good girl well done and we would feel happy about it it's good to get appreciation motivation but when we get dependent on that then the self worth you know what do i think about myself forget myself just wear a new dress forget the self just wear a new dress and go for a party or go to work you won't be happy with your dress till someone says something nice to you about it you will literally be waiting to see who is going to say something about that new dress that you're wearing check subtle this is checking our thoughts we will mm. say no 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 i'm happy with i'm happy with my dress check check carefully are you waiting for someone to appreciate are you waiting who's going to notice so that is where i know this is subtle checking that's where i know you know when you've done a performance you've done a program you've presented a project you've presented something you've created something are you waiting for someone to appreciate so when we are waiting for people to appreciate what we do then we're definitely waiting for people to accept who we are who we are and the more we are waiting for them we are not accepting ourselves unless people say that i'm a right person or i'm a good person so when we start meditating we start getting connected to the source of unconditional acceptance people accept us only when we are their way people will never accept you if you're not their way they will not because they believe i accept this person because they work like me they live like me they behave i'm very happy with this person so people only accept us when we are their way the divine accepts us the way we are the way we are so we need one source of unconditional acceptance that starts healing us and then we start loving ourselves we start loving ourselves we are not critical to ourselves we are not abusing ourselves in our mind with hurt and rejection and then we start becoming very comfortable in our own presence we are happy being alone we can spend enough time with ourselves we don't find the need to always engage with something or someone this is where now i've started loving myself i know myself i'm not perfect i'm working on myself but i know myself i don't need the world to tell me who i am i don't need the world to tell me whether i'm good bad whatever i don't need the world i know myself and i'm on my journey that's when we've understood ourselves we love ourselves 
we accept ourselves, but we also work on transforming ourselves. So acceptance doesn't mean, okay, this is the best that I am. We always have that margin to get better and better. So acceptance actually motivates us towards that self-transformation journey. And there's a few more questions. Another one, quite specific. How can I attract a beautiful relationship? I seem to attract very needy people who are in crisis and it doesn't last. Does that mean my energy is bad to attract these people? I don't feel my energy is bad though. Uh, no, we should never say energy is bad. It's the bad is not the word. Important is only to know what's the emotional patterns that I am carrying. The emotional patterns, you know, we're all carrying emotional thinking patterns. So like you shared about needy people. So needy means what? Need of what? Are they in need of love? Are they in the need of care? Are they in the need of emotional support? Do they just need someone to be with them? So is the person coming into that relationship for wanting something from me? Or is the person coming into a relationship to give into that relationship? So like you shared that they, I'm attracting more of needy people. So first check your emotional patterns. Do you like, does it give you, it's good to support people and care for people. But for some of us, it kind of gives, gives us a, what would be the right word? It actually kind of give, makes us feel good. It makes us feel good when we're able to be a support system for somebody. It makes us feel that I'm a nice person that I am able to heal people, or I am nice that somebody says that, oh, I met you and my life changed. So if I like that, then I will start attracting that because I like it. So I'm radiating that energy into the world. I like receiving this energy. So this energy will start coming to me. So let's start being aware. Do I like it? When people say that I am their support system or I'm able to take care of them, Take care of people, but don't be dependent on their appreciation for it. So then I will be there in the world, radiating and giving to the world, but not feeling that I am creating any change in people's lives. It's the divine and it's their destiny. I'm just a part of it. I'm just a part of their life. So let's not take personal credit when you see someone saying, oh, because of you, my life has changed. I'm so fortunate to be with you. Don't start liking that and don't take personal credit for that. Otherwise, you will definitely start inviting a lot of people in your life who will come with the same energies. So this is not bad energy. It's just emotional patterns. And there's another question here. Sometimes we are una unable to let go of resentment and rejection. What is the best way to let go of these two emotions? Feeling resented, resentful and rejection. One is to evaluate what had happened that time or that day when it happened, what I'm holding on to. Something has happened in the past, right? So it could be a one specific incident or it could be a pattern that was created with some person in a relationship or people. So what had happened? Because I created the wound that day. Now I'm only living with the wound, but the wound was created that day. And what was the wound that got created that specific day when that happened was they hurt me. They rejected me. Now, how do people reject me? One, people don't want to be with me. People were with me, but now they have changed. They don't appreciate me the way they used to be. They don't value me the way they used to be. So people have changed. And when people change, I feel they rejected me. When people don't behave right, I feel they disrespected me. When people cheat or betray, I feel they insulted me. So it is their behavior, but I am taking it very personally and I'm saying they did this to me. I just have to remove the to me and I've said they did this. Why did they do this? It's because of what they are going through in their mind. It's their emotional patterns. It's their behavior. It's their nature. But when I say they did this to me, they hurt me. And when I say they hurt me, I hold it here. And then I say, they are the ones who have to heal me. Either they apologize or they change or they create some change in themselves, which I will understand. So I need to rewind and I need to start writing. We need to write this out. 
because it's a wound we may be holding on to for many years. So we start writing. They did what they did because of who they were that day. Because of who they were that day, what they spoke, how they behaved. They did what they did because of who they were, because of what they were going through in their mind. They didn't do that to me. It is a reflection of their personality on that day. I am the one who created the hurt. How did I create the hurt? By what I said to myself in response to what they did. I am the one who created the hurt. Today, I forgive myself first. Forgive, forget forgiving them. That we'll do second. First is I forgive myself for all the hurt that I held on to for so many years. Second, I forgive them. They were in pain that day. Someone has to be in pain to do something which is not right behaviorally. If someone's happy and emotionally healthy, there will be no wrong behaviors. So someone is emotionally unwell to manifest it into an incorrect behavior, whether it's a cheating, whether it's a betrayal, whether it's a rude behavior, whether it's an abusive language, it is a result of emotional, not perfect health. So I forgive them for what they were going through that day. And then say, I release the past. I let it go. I am calm and stable. I'm happy. God loves me unconditionally. God accepts me unconditionally. So write out a few positive, pure affirmations and just write, uh, read this and then start saying this every night before going to sleep. That's the time where you have to put the seed of the healing. And ever during the day, if anything happens again, please release it before you go to sleep that night. We will carry no wounds if we release everything of the day before we go to sleep that night. It's during the sleep where the wound doesn't remain at the surface level, but goes deeper inside. And that's when we're not able to release it. So say these affirmations every night before you sleep and start meditating. Repeat the affirmation in the morning. First thing, within a few days, that pattern of hurt will be overwritten with the pattern of healing. It's just a thought. The hurt is a thought. Healing is also a thought. So the questions are coming in quite rapidly. And so another one is about um, somebody who's alcoholic. And the question is, how can we give support or help someone who is alcoholic? The person also understands that this is not good for his or her health. So how to support that one? Yes. Uh, first is, before we work on the outer addiction, we also need to understand the inner vacuum. So whether it's alcohol, whether it's shopping, whether it's technology addiction, it's always something not perfect inside, which makes me dependent on something outside. And if we check our list of dependencies, we could be dependent on people, we could be dependent on objects, we could be dependent on a substance. But any dependency is only a sign that I'm not perfectly happy and healthy inside. So before we remove the dependency, which we really cannot and which even the individual cannot. So you cannot remove the dependency without healing the being. And that's why focus on meditation, focus on consuming pure content on a daily basis. If the person is holding on to something of the past or any sense of personal failure or guilt, then they need to work on that specific releasing that pain. And as that being starts getting healed, the substance or any other addiction, it will go away in a very natural way. It's a very natural manifest. It's a consequence of the inner healing that you will automatically finish off your outer dependencies. But if you try to remove the outer dependency without the inner healing, it doesn't really happen successfully every time. Of course, for some people, willpower and one day they take a thought and that's it, it's over. It can happen that way. But it's good to do the inner healing and the inner energizing. Energize the being, the outer dependencies will just drop off. Wonderful. Another question, how do our thoughts and feelings interact with the body? What is intuition? Well, two questions. What is intuition? Is it our subconscious mind? Is that interacting with the body? How, how do our thoughts and feelings interact how do our thoughts with, the, with the body? Yeah. yeah. And then and the other the part intuition. of the question, what is, intu what is intuition? Is it our subconscious mind? So this is from the same person. 
Right. So how do our thoughts and feelings interact with the body? Every energy that we're creating here, it's vibrating to the body. You, we all have experienced this, right? So when we are stressed, we can see how our body responds. When we are hurt, we can see we don't feel like eating. And people will say, have your lunch. We say, no, I don't feel like eating today. So why don't you feel like eating? No, I'm not in a good mood. But what does the good mood have to do with the eating? But it's because the mood affects the body. So I don't feel like eating it. And ideally, we should not be eating till we are in the right mood because we are not radiating good energy. Mm -hmm. So even the food will not give us the right energy at that time. So we should never eat. In Ayurveda, which is a very ancient healing system in India, we are taught that if you are stressed or upset, don't eat. They say that food will become toxic because it's not having the right energy in the body. So we can see the impact of our thoughts and feelings on the body. And one is an immediate response, which means I get angry. I can see the response. I'm hurt. I can see the response. But one is a long-term response, which means I am creating stress on a daily basis. I am a very controlling personality on a daily basis. I am not able to forgive the past for many, many years. That will then keep on radiating those vibrations to the body. And that can create a blockage in the body because I created a blockage in my mind. So first we created a blockage here. Then it manifests into a blockage in the energy body that we have. And then that manifests into a blockage in our body. Now, when we go through a procedure or a surgery, we remove the blockage from the physical body, but we don't remove it from the energy body or we don't remove it from the mind. If we don't do it, then there are chances that after three years, four years, whatever, we are back to the same doctor with the blockage. So that's why the doctors say that every most of the diseases are lifestyle diseases, are psychosomatic diseases. So psychosomatic means it's happening a lot from the psyche. Now, what is intuition is when we silence the top layer of the mind. You know, silence the mind, which is thinking, talking, talking, talking. This silence the mind, it becomes still. And then we'll suddenly have some aha moment and we say like, this is what I want to do, or this is the solution. And when you, it is your intuition and you have that one answer, which pops up like that out of nowhere. After that, your mind will create no doubts. You know, when we have logical thoughts, then we have a lot of options in our thoughts. Should I do this? No, but I could do this, but I can do this, but no, but I think it's like this. So logical mind, when we create, we have a lot of options and then we create all those thoughts. Then we write down the pros and cons. Then we talk to people. That's logical way of working. Intuition is one thought like this and that's it. It doesn't give any options. Intuition just gives one answer. This is it. Go here, do this, live like this, travel here. It's just like one thought. And that one thought has no doubts, no anxieties, and no options. And most important, your logical mind also says, yes, I want to do this. Sometimes no one else around you agrees to it. It's like, no, don't do this. This is wrong. I said, no, I have a very strong feeling. This is good for me. I want to do it. So it's the more you will silence your top layer of mind, the more often you will experience the intuition. But if our mind is very cluttered, then we hear intuition very rarely which means the outer noise is so much that I can't listen to that inner voice. So meditation is a very, very powerful way to enhance our intuition power because meditation is about silencing our top layer of the mind and then creating pure thoughts. So when the quality of the thoughts is good, the speed is always slow. Mm. So when we shift to a higher vibrational thinking, our thought speeds will be lesser because number of thoughts will be lesser. Intuition will be often you might come up with aha things almost on a daily basis. Thank you, Shivani Ben. How can I have zero expectations when I've always been loving and giving? Huh. So it's simple. If you've been loving and giving, then you'll have no expectations because <laughs> you were loving and giving only because it's your nature to love and give. So why expectations? Expectation means we want people to be a certain way and our intentions are very pure. Our intentions are, but it's for their good. I'm saying it for their good that I want them to be this way. I don't want them to be my way. I just want them to be this way because this way is the right way for them. Intentions are pure, but it's not necessary. 
that the other person will immediately be able to change to be that way or wants to change to be that way. And then if I get hurt or if I'm disappointed and if I feel that they did not respond the right way, even though for I have done so much for them, it's then that that expectation doesn't just remain as an expectation. It creates a consequence of hurt. You know, so most of our expectations create consequence of hurt, disappointment, feeling let down. So, and then we say like, why did I have the expectation? That's why I'm in so much pain. So that's an outcome of those expectations. And when that happens, we blame them for our hurt. Expectation was created by us, but we blame them for our hurt because they did not meet up to our expectations. So the programming is very interesting. We create the expectation. We say they should have been this way. And when they are not that way, we create our hurt. And then we blame them for everything, even though it was all our creation. So when we energize this being, it's like this soul power is like a battery. The more this battery is charged, acceptance will become normal because you don't need the world to be your way. When this battery is a little depleted, I need everything to be my way for me to be feeling good. So either the world should be my way or the soul power should be energized. One of the two, life is comfortable. The world is not my way. So it's good to energize this. Acceptance will become normal. You don't have to accept people forcefully. It will be a normal part. And acceptance doesn't mean, okay, let people do what they want. Acceptance just means my mind is not dependent on them. My mind is not dependent on their behavior. I don't get affected. I give, I love, but I don't go, you know, inside disturbed because of their behavior. I'm just radiating unconditional acceptance. Sister Shivani, just to go back to the addiction question, because there's another question on top of that. And she's asked, she or he is asking, um, Regarding the addict, what if the addict is refusing to change and you have to live with that person? What's the solution? Okay. Uh, one, we won't call them an addict, not a nice word to use, because this is also an affirmation. You know, every word we say is a vibration. We need to remember that. Every word, even if I'm just saying it in my mind, it's a vibration. So if I say, it's like suppose someone is unwell, and if I keep saying they are unwell, they're unwell, they're unwell. So what vibration am I radiating to them? I'm radiating a lower vibrational energy. So we will not use this word once for them. Secondly, what we could do is we could meditate for them. We could create pure affirmations for them. Give them a few affirmations to do. Even if they don't want to give up the thing, don't worry. Don't worry about that. First, start healing them. So we can give them affirmations. I am a powerful being. A lot of people want to give up. It's just that they are not able to give up. So because they are not able to give up, they say, I don't want to give up. We have to understand what the mind is doing. It's not that they don't want to give up. It's that they are not able to give up. But they don't want to say, I'm not able to give up. So they say, I don't want to give up. So that's what the game the mind plays. So we should not say they don't want to change. We understand they're finding it difficult. So when someone finds something difficult, they just say, I don't want to do it because it's difficult for them. So it's not that they don't want to do it. Nobody is happy with any addiction. Nobody ever, because they go through a lot of upheaval inside. We think we are in pain. We can't imagine how much pain they are in. Mm -hmm. We can't even imagine how much pain they are in. One, the pain which is causing them towards going to a substance. And second, the pain that they go through after becoming dependent on a substance. So they are in a lot of pain. It's not that they don't want to give up just they feel they are not able to give it. So let's give them the tools without talking about that addiction. Those tools can be a natural part of our life without talking about that addiction. So if they come to a meditation center, even if they don't feel like meditating, never mind. Come there, talk to the sisters, be in that energy, start healing. Something is going to start energizing inside. So let's focus only on that. Let's not think and speak right now about the substance. Let's work on the person. Once the person is taken care of, substance will automatically be taken care of. You can energize their food and water. You know, food and water absorbs vibrations. If you can cook for them, if you can make their morning cup of coffee and tea, or whatever they would like to have, 
And while you are making it for them, if you can radiate vibrations into that cup of tea or coffee saying, I'm a powerful being. I'm a powerful being. I live my life my way. I eat and drink only that what is healthy. Just put these three thoughts into the food and water. Just put these three thoughts. I'm a powerful being. I'm a master of my life. I live my life my way. And I eat and drink only what is healthy. God's power and blessings is my circle of protection. Now, four thoughts is like an ingredient that we've energized their food and water with, which means it's absorbed those vibrations. These vibrations will start becoming their thinking. That's the power of how we energize nature. We radiate the vibration to the food and water. Food and water absorbs it. And then that becomes our predominant thought. And the person's thinking pattern will start changing. And they will get that energy to be able to give up the substance. So maybe just a couple more questions. The next one is about the planet. Can human beings alone bring the planet back to abundance? If we all shift to a high level energies, that's the solution. What would you say? We are the only, we are the only ones. Who else can do it? <laughs> who, can, who can change the energy of your house? Only you. So mm. who can change the energy of the world? Only we. And we don't need to, you know, we, it's not that we don't know. Let's, let's just see the past. So, and not a past, which is history. Past where we just go back to our childhood. So just rewind your life 20 years, 30 years and see, see the connection between the state of mind of people and the state of the world and draw a graph and you will see the direct connection there. So who's, who's responsible for this world that has been created? We. So who will change it? We. And when we change, this world will change. So human beings alone, nobody else is going to come out and change the world. It's only we by shifting to a higher vibrational energy. I think this is going to be the last question from the chat. So sorry to, for those of you that weren't able to get your questions answered. But this question is, um, is saying, I had doubts about my life. Then I started meditating and spiritual learning. But now I have become more sensitive about people. How can I be clear about relationships? whether they are sincere or just using me for their good? Uh, one thing is people cannot use us till we allow them to use us. You know, so when people are using us, we know they are using us. There's no way that somebody can use you and you're not aware that they're using you. You can make that. Important is, am I okay? So what is the meaning of using me? Suppose uh, someone needs you to take care of something about them. And you are doing it. Now, five years later, I can say they used me. But during those five years, I knew I was doing it because I liked doing it. I knew that I was doing it because it was coming natural to me. But five years later, because something didn't go right, I said they used me all these five years. So, you know, the word is very important. Vocabulary. Our vocabulary is very important for how we are feeling. So people are who they are. They have certain needs whether it's emotional, whether it's financial, whether it's social, they are coming into our life with their needs, with their needs. We are also going into people's lives with our needs. Even if the need is, I want love and respect, that's also a need. So people are also coming into our life with, our, with their needs. We should be able to see their needs. When you're sensitive to people, you will be able to see their needs. And then you need to make a conscious decision. You need to make a conscious decision which need are you comfortable with fulfilling? Not because they need it, but because you are comfortable being a giver. Being a giver. So even if it means you're financially supporting someone, so don't say they used me. I knew they needed it and I was fine. I was fine being there for them as a financial support. But when you say they used me, you're shifting from taking personal responsibility to becoming a victim and say people are not fair to me. We choose our every karma. So let's choose and say, I am choosing to support this person. I am choosing to take care of this person. I am choosing and I will do it till when I'm comfortable. So this word, people used me, will never come in your vocabulary. Thank you so much, Sister Shivani, for sharing such jewels, really. And it'd be lovely if you could meet leaders into a meditation. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, sister. Thank you.
Sit comfortable, sit straight. You can take three deep breaths, relax your body. And again, come here into the center of the forehead. Just focus your attention and visualize a tiny point of light. It's like a little star, the energy. And just above you, visualize another point of light, the supreme power. So it's me and the divine. I am a pure being. My every thought is selfless, clean. My every word is respectful. My every behavior is for the benefit of all. I am a pure being. Vibrations of purity radiate from me to the world. Visualize energy from me radiating into the world. See this happening. Purity from me radiating into the world. Shifting the energy. The ocean of purity. Supreme power. God. Loves me and accepts me unconditionally. I, the being, is filled by the love and power that I receive from the divine. Visualize like a laser beam from God to me here. Just visualize ocean of love filling me. Me, the being here. Cleanses my every wound. Gives me the power to release my past. Strengthens me to create the right present. God's energy becomes a part of my energy. I'm energized by the ocean of purity and love. God's energy is a part of my energy field, part of my aura. Now what radiates from me to the world is the divine energy. It's the divinity. It radiates to every cell of my body. It radiates to every person around me. It radiates to nature. I fill myself with God's love and blessings. I'm a radiator. God's power and blessings to the world. I create a shift within. The world change. 
is just a simple consequence of what I change within. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Thank you. Om Shanti. And so I think we've all, we all agree that it's been such an inspiring afternoon and thank you for sharing such practical tips on the questions that you heard and also just on this topic, a game of consequences and making it very clear that it really depends on our vibrational energy. So I think we can really begin to check that and begin to create a life that is enjoyable just by creating the right kind of energy which you will have the power to do. So thank you so much, Sister Shivani, for sharing so beautifully. Shanti.